never ever went to commit any zina. The Prophet of the Quran never gave anybody hadith books to follow. Wallahi lazim. And man, like I said, ever since God guided me, no wise person on earth has ever insulted me. I repeat, ever since God guided me, no wise person on earth has ever, ever insulted me. Ah, so let me see. The prophet in Hadith is totally different in the Quran. Yes, it's obvious. The prophet from the Quran is different from the prophet in the Hadith. They are not the same. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. Uh, yeah, Salam, uh, Sayyid Adam, I see you. Uh, Muhammad Kamal Deen, I see you. Uh, peace be upon you all. And sorry uh, about the delay. Uh, I think I had some interruptions, some inconveniences, and I have to schedule <clears throat> my time appropriately in order to, to, to be able to, to do this program. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please give me a signal if you can hear me sound and clearly, so that I can I can continue with the program, sound and clearly. Then I can continue. Give me a signal, just write for me that we can hear you sound and clearly. Then I can continue. Inshallah. <clears throat> yeah. Kindly give me a signal. You can write down for me if you can hear me sounding clearly. Uh, then I can continue the program. Yeah. Okay, I think it's clear enough because I can see it from here. Yeah, so it's clear enough. Uh, thank you all once again for coming. And um, please, you can share. You can share the video for me. Share it so that people will get to join uh, as soon as possible. You can share the video and let people join in order to benefit from this, inshallah. Let us be lahim in a shaitan or regime. Woman Ahsana call and Mimanda Aila Lahi wa Amila Salihan Wakala in the Limin and Muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to God and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the submitters? Hazi Sabili Adu Ila Ala Basiratin Ana Omanitaban was over Anna Lahi Wama Anna Mila Mishurkin. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to God. Allah, for I am not among the idolaters, that is the mushriks. Ya you will lazina amanu takullaha wa kunuma aswadikin. Oh, you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are truthful, that is, those who are honest. Swadikin. Right? Aha. So today's uh, program, I'm here to clear some of the misconceptions. During the week, some of the questions I get in my inbox, some of the questions people ask, and I thought, or I think this will be beneficial beneficial for other people to benefit from, to, to clear away the misconceptions. I, anyways, I've done this kind of program before uh, in the past, but I see the need that this is the right time also to, to actually clear out some misconceptions so that people can actually understand the deen in a better form. And as you can see here, this is the, the great Quran. Here, yeah, this is the great Quran right the great quran and you can see it with the serial number the barcode here everything intact and it's a trans translation transliteration and then the arabic format as well and it makes it easier for the beginner or anybody who is like learned to to take it up and then study the quran as some of you get the got the free version of the pdf which i shared uh, uh some time ago but unfortunately the uh, the free version has ended like you know not sell enterprises in charge so they decided okay uh, no more sharing for free and now it is uh up for sale right uh for people who have ordered the book version that is the hardcover version they can testify to you by this and he's got we have it in the us uh the sales are ongoing uk us europe uh it goes to the asia i think some people have ordered from africa uh south africa uh but i'm yet to get it organized also in ghana nigeria and other 
places. So I'm doing my best to, to collaborate so that I can get this to spread for people to benefit uh, from it, inshallah. Yes. Uh -huh. so, <clears throat> so we thank God uh, for giving us today. Uh, we are here to witness this program. So some of the questions I'll be going around is, is Jesus dead or alive? I'll be talking about is Jesus dead or alive? Then if time permits, I'll be talking about circumcision, right? Circumcision. Then I'll be talking about uh, the translation and interpretation of the Quran. Is it allowed or not? Then again, if time permits, I'll be talking about was the prophet's sins both present and future forgiven? Or is it a misconception on how people say, oh, the prophet has been forgiven his both his past and the present and whatever he does will be forgiven. Is it true or false? We are going to see, right? Uh -huh. So I'll be coming to that to elaborate the misconception that people usually have concerning uh, these issues in the Quran, inshallah. We are going to see. Now, <clears throat> so first of all, we are going to address the misconception concerning Jesus. Is Jesus, that is Isa, according to the Quran, and Jesus, according to the English language, and Yeshua, according to the Hebrew uh, concept of the name. Uh, just like we can have different versions of the name, for instance, in Arabic, when we say Mikael, it means Michael in English, right? If you go to France or if you go to Germany, they say Michel. It is the same name, but different versions of the name, right? So similarly, it goes for every other language out there. They have the way they call certain uh, names in their version, right? Uh -huh. So first of all, I take you to Quran chapter 4 verse 157 to 158 right and i'm going to quote the verse pertaining to that and let's see what uh it contains here uh sorry i, I have not been reading the comments let me let me check and see what is going on uh sorry i have not been yeah salam isa watson i see you uh rock silver i see you uh Rafiu. Uh, Atanga, I see you, Abdul Salam. Yes, Yusuf Kabir Oluku says, I have questions to ask. Yes, I'll open the phone lines. You can call well, as soon as I open. Uh, Imam Taju says, uh, he says, Hi, brother, please reply me in your inbox. Yes, I'll check. I'll check, inshallah. I'll reply. Momo Ali, you salam. Yes, I see you. Uh, Mohammed Mutawakkal, yes, we can hear you, says, buddy. <laughs> I know you hate me, but no problem. Just be open your mind and listen with a, a clear, clear conscience. You get to understand me later. Uh, Abdul Kudu says, "Yeah, we can hear you clearly." Yeah, Vora Vora. Yeah, hi, hi. Uh, Isa Watson, salam. I see you. Uh, Baba Shrai, we are ready. Hope you have fixed up with your insult. Well, I'm not insulting. I only describe people, right? If somebody is a fool, I describe them. If somebody is a criminal, I describe them. If somebody is a mushrik, I describe them. <laughs> so I don't see where the, you see insults there. Uh, Kwekwe Ewanam says, Salam, Salam. Uh, Hajj, Azbat, Salam. I see you. Abu Bakar, Salam. Salam alaikum, all of you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, let me hit up some of my uh, people to, to join on this live stream so that they can also uh, benefit from this. Uh, just a second. Just a second. Yeah. Okay. So... First of all, we are going to uh, see the issues regarding... Uh, thank you very much. Vora, Vora, I will keep up the good work. Uh, Nazir and says, says, I'm my new follower and I'm here to learn. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome to learn with me. Uh, allow everybody to learn, unless if you're trying to take things personally, then you can't learn with me. Okay. So as I said, we go to Surah to Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157, and I'm going to read to 158, right? And they are saying, uh, 
they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah. Right? Wakaulihim inna katalna Masih. That is Masih. Masih is the Messiah, right? And when we start from above, so let's see, let's start from uh, 100 and let's see, 50. Uh, let, okay, let's start from 156. And for their disbelief and their sin of a terrible slander against Mary, right? The, the people who hated uh, Jesus and hated Miriam and hated everything about God decided to slander Miriam, right? Uh -huh. And for their disbelief, Wabikufirihim, wakaulihim, ala Maryama, ah, buhtanan azima. So, and for their disbelief and their saying of a terrible slander against Maryam. 157. And they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God, right? So it was the disbelievers, the kufr, the kufar, among those people, the children of Israel, who were the ones saying that they killed uh, the Messiah, right? Then God says, while they did not kill him. And now this misconception that people usually have, you still don't know the Quran is lying. How can the Bible say he killed him? And why is the Quran now saying, no, they didn't kill him? For instance, sometimes in life, let's say you have, uh, let's say this mobile phone. I'm, I'm supposed to go and drop it at the post office, right? Sometimes, uh, sometimes this phone might be at home, but I might be thinking I went to drop it off already. So when a circumstance happened, then I will remember and say, wow, oh, I thought I posted this phone already. It's still here with me. You understand? Uh -huh. So with this concept, when God says, while they did not kill him, they claim they have killed him. And God says, while they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. But it was a resemblance. When you say, should be hard. It's like tashabaha, mutashabiha, something shabaha, something which is re a resemblance for you, right? So you can even have somebody who resembles Jesus and you are claiming that is Jesus. It's just like today, if you are looking for every celebrity's look alike, you get. You can even get somebody who looks like Donald Trump. <laughs> so if you go and get the look alike of Donald Trump or look alike of Snoop Dogg or look alike of Michael Jackson and kill Michael Jackson. Does that mean you killed my, Michael Jackson himself? No. You understand? So you have to understand this concept, what God is saying. Don't put your own assumptions and desires there. So then he says, indeed, those who deferred about it are in doubt thereof. They are in doubt who they actually killed. It's just a narrative. People say, we killed the Messiah, we killed the Messiah. They never killed him. You see the point? Now, so God says they have no knowledge about it. They only follow assumption. It is an assumption. People are actually taking it up. So people will say, oh, it is written in the New Testament. Remember, the New Testament you are reading, especially the Gospels, they are Gospels according to St. Luke, St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. John. And even the book of Matthew itself, when you read, it tells you clearly Matthew was not the one who wrote it. Check Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 for yourself and see who wrote it, right? Uh -huh. So those books were not the Injil given to Isa, alayhi salam. The one God said he gave him. According to some Christians, they will quote Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, that the Spirit of God is upon Jesus and has anointed him to preach the gospel. So where is the gospel Jesus preached? It is something that people, somebody else wrote and alleged and tell you that, oh, this is the book of God. God never revealed any book called the New Testament. Let those who follow New Testament quote a verse for you in the Bible where it says God reveals something called New Testament. It doesn't exist. You see the point. Uh -huh. So these misconceptions that people are having, the verse, I'm going to address this point to clear out this misconception, to tell you that the death of Jesus was the one God actually took him away. How can somebody who come by who came by a spirit, he didn't come by a natural type of birth, who came by spirit, you claim you will kill a spirit. How can you kill a spirit? Somebody who was given the, 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 uh, the, the permission to be able to raise up the dead, right? He is able to give life to a bed, to, to a clay, and he becomes a bed. And he's able to raise up the dead, somebody from the dead. And you claim you killed. How can you kill such a person? 
who God has given the Holy Spirit together with him. How? You understand? Good. So let's move ahead. So now this verse, Quran chapter 4, verse 157 says, And they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. It was a slander. So they have to find a way to find this excuse. Now remember, it is the kufu. It is not saying the Christians did it. It is not saying that the Jews did it. It is not saying anybody. But it is the kufur among the children of Israel. So if you like, you can start the context of the verse, maybe from 100 and uh, maybe 50 downwards, and you get the context of who it is talking about. That is the children of Israel concerning Moses and his people and so on, right? So it goes ahead and God says, for, for they did not kill him. Certainly, Yakina. When we say Yakin, it's something with certainty for sure. They never killed him. It was God who sent his messenger, and he's telling you they never killed him. Why will you, out of your stupidity, still claiming because of a text has written something and you keep still claiming they killed him? Were you there? No. Right? So now, verse 158. And God says, in fact, uh, he says, Bar, Rafa, Rafa Ahu, Lahu Ilayhi, Wakan Allahu Azizan Hakima. God says, in fact, God raised him to him. He raised Jesus to him for God is almighty and wise. Remember, Jesus came by a spiritual birth. According to the Quran, chapter 66, verse 12. Right? Quran, chapter 66, verse 12. And also Quran, chapter 19, if you start reading from verse 16 to verse 21, he, he didn't come by a natural type of, uh, sorry, uh, the, the physical type of birth we, we see normally, that somebody, a man and a woman who complete before giving birth, he didn't come in that way. He was a spirit blown into uh, his ma mother and then he was conceived, right? Uh -huh. So now God has to take him back. Somebody who didn't just come by a natural cause, like the way we see the birth happening, it came in a miraculous way. You expect that such a soul, can you kill such a soul which was... Uh, uh, what together with the Holy Spirit, Quran chapter two verse two hundred and fifty-three. Let me confirm, Quran chapter two verse two hundred and fifty-three. Yeah, concerning the messengers and God spoke about that. Uh, uh, those messengers, some of them we uh, because to exceed over others, God favored them over others. And among them were what there was the one God spoke to, that is Moses, and he raised some of them in what? Ranks or degrees. And we gave Jesus, the son of Mary, what evidences and supported him with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was supported with the Holy Spirit. So someone who has been supported with the Holy Spirit, how can you, a layman, kill such a person? How? Does it make sense? Can you kill a spirit? How? You see, so I go back to the point, chapter 4, verse 157 to 158, and it says, in fact, God raised him to him, for God is almighty and wise. So we are going to see how that happened. How is God saying he raised him, but then somebody they killed was this resemblance for them. It wasn't actually Jesus they killed. So we are going to see the evidences based on what the Quran says. So now I take you to Quran, chapter 3, verse 55. Let's see what is God is saying in that verse. Quran, chapter 3 verse 55 suratul al imran we go to al imran and see what it says right uh mutala muhammad says which place in the bible god says jesus didn't die First of all, God never re revealed a book called Bible. Somebody say, oh, Bible is just a Greek word for paper, for book, for the... The Bible itself doesn't claim, doesn't defend itself as God revealed a book called Bible or a book like that, a book called Old Testament or New Testament. God never revealed. When you take the Quran, chapter 10, verse 37, the Quran bears witness of itself as being from God, the Quran. So when you read the cover, it says the Quran. When you go inside, the Quran defends itself. Right. Uh -huh. So first of all, if you have to take a book where you don't even have the original copy, your original copy is in the Greek version. Your Jesus wasn't a Greek. He wasn't a Greek. And you don't even have the original copy of your Bible. Why? In the first place, our debate will be useless. Right. I will not waste my time. <laughs> you have a photocopy and you want to do a debate with a photocopy. Go and bring the original book. We can have a debate. Right. 
Okay, so Quran chapter 3 verse 55. And God says, then God said, oh Jesus, indeed I will cause you to die. That is mutawafika. In the Quran, when the word tawaf, mutawafa, is used, it is to cause death. Rest. It is to take the soul away. And I'll give you some examples. For instance, if you go to uh, Quran chapter 10, verse 46, God used a similar instance of word for the Prophet Muhammad, salam, where he says, وَإِمَّا نُرِيَنَّكَ بَادَ الَّذِي نَئِدْهُمْ أَوْ نَتَوَفَيَنَّكَ so the word nata wafayanaka, that is the similar word God used for Jesus by saying mutawafika, right? Mutawafika. And when the angel of death also comes to take your soul, it is the same word God used. Kul yata wafakum malakul mauti lazi wukila bikum thumma ila rabbikum turja'un. So the word yata wafa. Mutawafa, natawafayanaka is the same, based on the context. So it is about taking a soul away. So God says in Quran chapter 10, verse 46 to Prophet Muhammad, even if we show you some of what we have promised them, or we cause you to die, meaning we take your soul away, then to us is their return. Then God will be a witness over what they do. Do you see how it goes? So when I take you back to Quran chapter 3, verse 55, when God told Isa, Is call Allah, Ya Isa, inni mutawafika. Then he says, Warafiuka. You see? Warafiuka ilayya. You see? So then God said, Oh Jesus, indeed, I will cause you to die. He will take his soul away and raise you to me. He didn't say, I will cause you to be killed. I will let somebody kill you. Or I will let them crucify you. Or I will let them kill you. He says, I will cause you to die. That is, take the soul away. Remember, he came in a spirit form and he's living as a spirit form. Who, so who are you to say you are going to kill Jesus and bury him? <laughs> are you nuts? <laughs> so it's only a mushrik, a disbeliever, a kafir who is claiming they killed Jesus. Yes, and it doesn't make sense at all for you to even claim you kill somebody who 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 Holy Spirit is with him. How can you kill such a person? Does it make sense? Uh -huh. So then God said, "Oh Jesus, indeed I will cause you to die and raise you to me and purify you from those who disbelieve and will place those who followed you." Those who followed you doesn't mean the Christians. God never gave anybody a religion called Christianity. Jesus was not a Christian. His people were Ansarullah, those who supported God with him. Quran chapter 61, verse 14. You can check what he says. So I give you an example. Quran chapter 61, verse 14. The supporters of Jesus. This is what is said about them. Ya yuwal lazina amanu kunu ansarullahi kema kala isa ibn Maryam lil hawariyina. Man ansari ilallah. Kala al hawariyuna nanu ansarullah. These are the supporters of God. Right? Then he says, Fa amanat ta'ifatun min bani Israela wa kafar wa kafara ta'ifat. So another group disbelieved and another group among the children of Israel, they believed. Those are not classified as Christians. Jesus never gave anybody a religion called Christianity. He only called the disciples to be what? Ansarullah, supporters of God. So from there, we got the word Nasara. Nasara means somebody, a partisan, a supporter, somebody who supports something. So it's from the enemies of Christianity, uh, the, the followers of Jesus, they started tagging them as Christians, Christians, Christ, because of Christ, the Messiah, right? The Messiah. So now... <clears throat> If I take you back to the context of what we are talking about, Quran chapter 3, verse 55, then God said, Oh Jesus, indeed I will cause you to die, mutawafika, and raise you to me and purify you from those who disbelieve, and will place those who followed you above those who disbelieve till the day of resurrection. It's not talking about Christians. Please, please think well. 
Mm -hmm. When we say Nasara or Ansarullah, it's talking about the supporters of God through Jesus. But it doesn't mean Christianity, just like the ones who worship Jesus and then worship idols concerning his mother, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. No, not those ones. Those are idol worshippers. Then to me is your return, and I will judge between you concerning what you have deferred in. Right? Whatever the people have deferred, then God will judge on the day of judgment. So this is why even if when you go to the book of, uh, uh, is it Matthew? Uh, the Bible, it's, uh, I think, chapter 7 or verse 31 or so, when Jesus said, not everybody who said to him, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the only those who do the will of the Father above. Those are the ones who will enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus didn't come to do his own will, right? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, chapter 3, verse 55, tells you how God raised him. He took his soul away and raised him. He didn't say they killed him or anybody killed him. Right? Good. So now, again, then I give you the next verse, which is chapter 5, verse 116 to 118. Let's see what it says. Because usually people are misunderstanding the concept, saying that the Quran says Jesus will come back. It's a lie. Jesus is never, ever coming back. And I'm going to prove that to you. Jesus is never coming back. Nowhere did the Quran say he's coming back. And I'll come to that. That is why I'm here to clear the misconception away. Right? So take your time. Have your popcorn with you. And enjoy the show. Yeah? Yes. So Quran chapter 5, verse 116 to 100, and let's see, 17 or 18. Right? So let's read and see. And when God will say, that is on the day of judgment, listen what God will say. And when God will say, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, Take me and my mother as gods, that is two gods, besides God, did you say that to them? He, Jesus, will say, Glory be to you. He will say what? Subhanaka. Ma yakunu li an akula ma laysa li bihakkin. In kuntu kultuhu faqad alimtahu. Then he says, Ta'alamu ma fi nafsi wa la alamu ma fi nafsik. Innaka anta allamun guyub. So now Jesus will say, Glory be to you. It was not for me to have said what I have no right. If I had said it, you, then you will have known it. You, God, because he knows all. You know what is in my soul, but I do not know what is in yourself. Indeed, you are the knower of all unseen. And this will transpire on the day of judgment, right? So Quran chapter 5, verse 117. Then Jesus continued by saying, Huh? Ma kultu lahum illa ma amartani bihi. Anih budu laha rabbi wa rabbukum, rabbakum. Wa kuntu alayhim shahidan ma dum tu fihim. Then he says, Falamma tawafaitani. You see here, tawafaitani, the word mutawafika in Quran chapter 3, verse 55. It's confirmed. Now, on the day of judgment, Jesus is repeating that. And when you caused me to die, when you took my soul away, then he says, Kunta anta rakiba alayhim wa anta ala kulli shayin shaheed. So now Jesus said, I told them just what you, God, commanded me, that worship God, my Lord, and your Lord. Then he says, and I was a witness over them as long as I was among them. Who are them? The children of Israel. Yes, he was among them, not among you. He doesn't know you, the imposters of today. He doesn't know you, right? He was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel, right? He wasn't sent to just everybody like that uh for with, with his message right so since he was among the children of israel now this is what he says i told them just what you commanded me that worship god my lord and your lord and he says and i was a witness over them as long as i was among them 
But when you caused me to die, that is, you took me away, you became the observer over them, for you are a witness over all things. This is what will transpire on the day of judgment. Verse 118. If you punish them, then indeed they are your servants. This is what Jesus will say. But if you forgive them, then indeed you are the almighty, the wise. So the choice is for God. Nobody has to decide. Quran chapter 18 verse 26. He does not share his, his judgments with anybody. He is the only one who judges. Nobody judges with him. You see. So now this verse is in the contrast of, in the contrast of verse Chapter 3, verse 55, when God took him away and raised him, which is confirmed of also in chapter 4, verse 158, he raised him away. Jesus wasn't killed and buried by people. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. So then we go for, further. When I take you to Quran, chapter 19, verse 15, I'm going to show you something interesting. How, how people twist the verses of God out of context. And then they will say something which God doesn't never said salam uh brother mood hussein salam alaikum hey baba said unaganka salam alaikum aha uh -huh. so hey who was calling me it's not time for the call yet so please stop calling me aha uh -huh. so i take you to quran chapter 19 verse 15 i'm going to show you something interesting how both the mainstream muslims and some christians are lying to people saying Jesus will come back. It's a lie. He's never coming back. God has taken his soul away till the day of judgment. He's never, ever coming back. He doesn't know you. If he's coming back, is he coming as a white man or as a black man? Where is he coming? Israel. When he was alive, there was no country called Israel. <laughs> that Israel you are seeing was only, it's an Israeli state formed in the year 1948. <laughs> when Jesus was alive, there wasn't a country called Israel. So if you think he is coming to that country called Israel, stop fooling yourselves. <laughs> and when he is coming, does he know you? How can he come back to a people he never knew? <laughs> He's dead and gone. God has taken his soul away. And I'm going to confirm that to you, right? Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 19, right? Chapter 19. And we are going to see from verse 15. I'm going to show you something interesting. How people are too twisting the words of God out of context to put their own narratives. They don't let the context to do the talking. And that is the deviance there, right? So Quran chapter 19, right? In verse 15, God, uh, God was talking about what? John, that is John the Baptist, Yahya. Now, this similar instance was repeated for Jesus. And I'm going to help people to understand. In order to know that he's talking about John the Baptist, start from verse 12 chapter 19 verse 12 he says oh john take the book with strength and we gave him judgment as a youth sabiya he was a youth a young guy giving the book and the judgment and verse 13 as affection from us and purity and he was pious verse 14 and he was nice to his parents both parents father and mother and he was not tough and rebellious meaning he's not jabaron asiya Somebody who is rebellious, disobedient, right? Good. And then verse 15, then he says, Was salamun alayhi yawma wulida. And peace be upon him the day he was born. Do you see? The day he was born, peace be upon him. Right? Then he says, Wa yawma yamutu. And the day he will die. The day he will die. And then he says, Wayoma Yuba Athu Haya. And the day he will be resurrected alive. So we have three instances. He was born, he will die, and he will be raised alive. This is John the Baptist on the day of judgment. That is the, when God will raise you alive. So he was born, and he will die, and he will be risen alive. So now, what is the difference between him and Jesus? Let's go and see if there's any difference again. When some people twist the verse out of context and lie to you and say, look, this is where he says he will be raised alive. So it means Jesus is being risen alive. Are you lying to yourself? He will only be raised alive on the day of judgment. He's never, ever coming back. Stop lying to yourself. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. so for some of the Muslims, mainstream Muslims who lie to themselves and say, oh, uh, Quran chapter 19, verse 33, this is where Jesus is coming back. You are liars. Stop lying. 
to people. We are going to see the evidence today. Quran chapter 19, verse 33. If you want to understand the context, start from verse 30. Quran chapter 19, verse 30 is talking about Jesus. Kala inni Abdullahi atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiya. He, Jesus, said, Indeed, I am a servant of God, not a slave of God. Jesus was not a slave. Muhammad is not a slave. No, actually, we are not even slaves of God. We are servants. There's a difference between saying slave and servant. You'll be a fool to call yourself slave of God. God has given you free will. And you still call yourself a slave. Do you know what it takes to be a slave? A slave does, no have, does not have a free will. You stop fooling yourself and taking words out of context. Indeed, I am a servant of God. He has given me the book and made me a prophet. Right? God gave him a book and made him a prophet. Verse 31. And he, God, has made me blessed wherever I will be and has ordained for me the salat, the litany, and the what? Zakat, the charity. As long as I live. For as long as he lives, he will observe the salat and the zakat. Then verse 32, and to be nice to my parents, just like also Yahya was nice to his both parents. But Jesus, unfortunately, had one parent, which is his mother. And has not made me tough and squandered. God didn't make him Jabbar, a stubborn child and a squandered, Shakiya, somebody who is very aggressive. You understand? Then it continues, verse 33, and peace be upon me the day I was born, just like G uh, John the Baptist, the day he was born. And the day I will die, which we saw in Quran chapter 3, verse 55, God raised him, took his soul away and raised him. He is dead. And the day I will be resurrected alive. Now compare this verse to chapter 19, verse 15 about John and bring it back to chapter 19, verse 33 and tell me the difference. Peace be upon John, the day he was born, the day he will die, and the day he will be resurrected alive. Three instances. Chapter 19, verse 33. Peace be upon me, that is Jesus, the day I was born, that is one. The day I will die, that is two. And the day I will be resurrected alive, that is three. Tell me what is the difference between him and John. So, out of your stupidity, is John coming back? <laughs> Hey, these people. Kakuzo nanga na ibizi yankuri. Kakuzo yankuri. Meku keso. Me? Give me my tita back a battery. Rakas, please help them out, please. I have the battery on top of the uh, where I put the game pad up there. I put it there, up there. Where I normally put my game pad on top of the the shelf, up there, please. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you see, so yeah, peace, uh, brother Jasim Al Katan. Salam, uh, you're welcome. Yeah, salam, uh, young breezy. I see you. Yeah, yeah, Baba said, don't, don't, don't mind them. I'm not going to answer any stupid questions. Uh, Gabon Boya, I see you. Greetings, my brother. You're welcome. Uh, peace be upon you, Hassan Chibi. Yeah. Eh, Salis Nagan Kasalam. Aha. Abdullah says, did the, did the Quran talk about Salangawa? No, there is no funeral salat. There is no salat, salat al janaza in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Yeah. They misquote the verses of God. And let them face me in a live dialogue and see. Aha. Uh -huh. The mushriks, that's how they stress up. They will lie to you. They say Jesus is coming back. It's a lie. It is the mushriks, like the Sunni, the Shia, whatever. They are the ones twisting the verses of God out of context and tell you Jesus is coming. It's a lie. Let any scholar face me on this. I can prove them wrong. Yes. Well, lie. I'll prove you wrong. Mm -hmm. You are lying to the people. You are liars. All the mushriks, especially the mainstream so-called Muslims out there. <clears throat> Muhammad Nur uh, Savani says, I want to know 
your faith on Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, he is a prophet of God and a messenger of God. I believe in him. Yes, that's my faith. Uh, Muti Muti, salam. You're welcome. Uh, Robert Jones says salam, brother. You're welcome. Uh, Ayivor Ibrahim Donko, greetings. Greetings, my brother. Okay, let's move on. So we can see Quran chapter 19 verse 15 has no difference with Quran chapter 19 verse 33 concerning John the Baptist and Jesus. There's no difference. So Jesus is never coming back. He's dead and gone. God has taken away his soul. Uh, Danzaiki brother. Danzaiki brother says, Baba, please, is it appropriate for a Muslim to eat pork? No, it is not appropriate according to Quran chapter 6 verse 145. Quran chapter 6, verse 145. It is not appropriate for a Muslim to eat pork. It says, Kul, la ajidu, fi ma uhiya ilayya, muharraman, ala ta'imi, yet amuhu, illa an yakuna maitatan, au daman. Then he says, masfuha. Then he says, au lam lahaman khinzir. To eat the meat of pig is haram. Muharram is haram. Right? Then the reason is, God says, for in nahu ridisun, because it is filthy, it is unclean. And the evidence is there. You can check it on the internet. Google it why the meat of pig is, is, is bad. It has worms, it has diseases, a lot of it is filthy. So whatever God prohibits for you is for your own good. It doesn't harm God in any way if you decide to eat. That's up to you. Then God says, Au fiskun, and it is also immoral because that animal is an immoral animal. Right? Uh -huh. it, it is just a pork, 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 a pig can eat anything. Give him even human being, he eat anything. You understand? He can even eat a toilet. <laughs> so it is not good for you. So that is why God forbid, forbid us from eating pork meat. Right? Uh -huh. So let's continue the program. Uh, somebody says Muhammad Nur says why don't you believe in his hadith first of all he doesn't have any hadith the prophet never gave you a book where he put his signature or stamp and said this is hadith book apart from the Quran I give you this so follow it it doesn't exist the books you are upholding Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim uh, Jami Al-Tirmizi uh, Abu Dawood, Sunana, he never met all of them. They, they are all garbages compared to the Quran, right? So put them aside. He never even authorized those books to be written. He is not the one who classified them as Sahih. <laughs> so why waste your time and lie to yourself that he has had it? What kind of stupidity are people trying to uphold in Islam? After God telling him clearly in Quran chapter 45, verse 6, And in which hadith after God and his verses will they believe? So you think the prophet will sit down again, fabricate hadith, and give it to the people. Then the people will come to God. Ah, we believe in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad after your hadith. God has given you Allah wa nazal al hasan al hadith, Quran chapter 39, verse 23. What else does the human being need that decide? Isn't it sufficient for you that you have the book of God with you? Okay. Uh, uh, Ayyivor says, can a Muslim married Christian woman, if it's a Christian and she's not an idol worshiper, if she's not a mushrik, you can marry her. If she doesn't believe Jesus is God or the son of God, you can marry her. Yes, Quran chapter 2, verse 221. Quran chapter 2, verse 221. Yes, you can marry her if only she's not a mushrik. Uh, Muti Muti says, brother, what do the Quran say about the earth, brother? Is it flat or round? Uh, well, this is a topic whereby I have to rearrange and do, right? Because I don't... I don't agree with the concept of saying the earth is flat. I would rather use the word outspread. And I don't agree with the concept of saying the earth is round like the sun and the moon and the... No, they are not. 
And according to the Quran, God doesn't mention, nowhere did God ever mention the earth as, a, as an, uh, uh, a planet. The earth is not classified as a planet according to God. The planets are different from the earth. So whenever God is talking about the creations of the heavens and the earth, he says, anytime, so he never mentioned the earth as a, as a, kawa, a, a, kawkab, as a uh, planet. So that is one of the things I need to find a time to explain better. Sula Ibrahim says, do you observe five daily prayers? There is no such thing in the Quran. There is no such thing as Hamza Salawat. It doesn't exist in the Quran, right? So I wouldn't do something which is not in the Quran. Vora Vora says, I don't agree with you, the pork issue. If God knows very well that it is not good consumption by his children, why did that God create it? Come again, Baba. Uh, yo, yo, I don't get the, the sense in your question. You mean you are questioning God, why did he create something? He is God. He has created something and said, don't touch it. Is it a big deal? Vora Vora. <laughs> it's just common sense. You understand? You can be at a workplace. Boss can tell you there's something here. I put it there. Don't touch it. It's not for use. If you go and use it, he, it is for him. He decided. He did it. And he told you, don't touch it. Because they have their own benefits. If you have pig uh, and you want them to come and eat any debt uh, from your farm or any, they will do it. So a pig, a pig has its own benefits. And even the bones of pig are used for other benefits, right? Uh -huh. So it is the meat. God says don't consume it. It doesn't mean they don't have any benefits. God never creates anything uselessly. They have their own benefit. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to eat the meat. We have animals which are in the jungle. Their meat are not to be consumed. You understand? They are just there for a purpose. And you have to allow the animal to be in that position. So there's nothing wrong. It's just a concept of understanding, Vora Vora. Uh -huh. So somebody says, are you a Muslim? Yes, I'm a submitter. A Muslim means a submitter to God. I submit to God. That's what makes me a Muslim. I'm not a mushrik like the way the mainstream so-called Muslims are. Uh, yes, okay, let, let me go on. Let me move on uh, because I'm getting distracted a bit. I think the... Nazir and NSC says, did our prophet marry Aisha at nine? First of all, there is no woman called Aisha in the Quran. Here, there is no young girl. The prophet married as Aisha. It doesn't exist. Huh? It doesn't exist. There's nothing like Aisha here. He didn't marry any girl at nine years old. It doesn't exist here. Right? So put those garbages out. The prophet I know in this Quran didn't marry six years old girl. He never married any nine years old girl. He doesn't know any lady called Aisha. Put her aside. Yeah. Uh, please, let me move on. The coincidence is getting too much. Uh, Isaac, amen. Say, did Jesus die? Yes, Jesus died. Did Jesus die? Yes, he's dead. I just showed the evidence. So you can watch the program later and, and understand. Yes. Uh, Vora Vora, no problem. Agreement, you can decide to agree or disagree. It's no problem. <laughs> it doesn't make something false or the truth. It's a choice. Something can be the truth, you can decide not to agree. Something can be the lie, you can decide to agree or not to agree. So, fine. Anyways, let's move on. Now, uh, we go ahead with the program so i've shown the evidences why jesus is dead and he's never coming back now let's go to circumcision circumcision especially the mushriks will tell you you have to circumcise your children especially the male kids first of all the prophet himself prophet muhammad himself he's not was not circumcised there's no evidence of circumcision right there is no evidence of circumcision he himself wasn't circumcised Oh, let me close this. Something is disturbing my page here. Yeah. Muhammad himself, alayhi salam, was not circumcised. Adam was not circumcised. No evidence of any prophet in the Quran circumcised because it's not a command of God. And I'm going to give you the misconception where it started from. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So now, when you take... Uh, Circumcision, the topic of circumcision. When we say circumcision, 
you need to understand where it's originated from and why people are lying against God and telling you you have to circumcise your kids. The act of circumcising performed on males eight days after birth as a Jewish and the Mushriks religious rite, which is not from Islam. It's not in the Quran, right? So they circumcise the male frontal uh, foreskin. They circumcise it. They cut it off. And then they tell you this is part of the religion. It's a lie. It's not part of Islam. Wallahi, it's not part of Islam. It is the devil commanding you, and I'm going to pre prove that, right? So now I'm going to show the evidence here. Let's see the evidence. Now, when we say circumcision, I've shown you the meaning of circumcision, right? Good. Now, let's take into consideration that the book the Christians call Torah or the Jews call Torah is not the real Torah given to Musa, salam, the one Moses wrote according to them. They say Moses rewrote the Torah in the book. According to Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 24, Moses was the one who finished writing the, the, the Torah. He wrote the book and finished writing the laws, the Torah himself when he was alive. According to Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 24. Right? According to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, he told them not to add anything to the commands of God again after it has been written down. Nothing should be reduced, nothing should be added. But after Moses died, Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 5 to verse 8, it showed that Moses died. Who wrote that verse there? Where is the permission? Broken. So if Moses had finished writing the Torah, how come somebody is still writing something after him? So it shows a problem there. So that is not the real Torah. How, however, the Quran is to serve as a confirmation of what was before it. Meaning if God said something in the past and it is real, which comes from God, God will confirm it in the Quran. Because the Quran is claiming to be from God. Right? And throughout history, no book, uh, no book, nowhere did God says he ever revealed something called Old Testament and New Testament. These are people's own words. Right? Good. The five books that they have and allege it and they say the five books of Moses are not even the books that Moses wrote. No. And I'm going to present some argument here. When you go to Quran chapter 3, verse 3 to verse 4, it says, And he has revealed the book to you in truth, confirming what was before it, as he revealed the Torah and the gospel. Before, that is earlier, as guidance for the people, Linas, for mankind, right? And he revealed the criterion, al furqan Indeed, those who disbelieve in the verses of God will have a severe punishment, for God is mighty with vengeance. So God has revealed the book to you, confirming what was before it, as he revealed the Torah and the gospel before as guidance for the people. So the Quran revealed, the book revealed to Muhammad was to serve as a confirmation of what was before it. Just like he says in Quran chapter 10 verse 37, this Quran, it is not a book that can be invented by other than God. However, it is a confirmation of what was before it and an elaboration of the book. There is no doubt therein from the Lord of the worlds. You see, uh -huh. that is Quran chapter 10, verse 37. So now the issue arises here, right? Let's see. The issue ar arises here. Now, if I take you to Quran chapter 4, verse 118 to 119, let's see what God actually says concerning Iblis, the devil, right? Quran chapter 4, verse 118 to 119. Quran chapter 4, verse 118 to 119. And mind you, mind you, Adam was not circumcised by anybody. Noah was not circumcised by anybody. According to the Bible, circumcision started at the time of Abraham when he was 99 years. <laughs> so as an old man, he now have to take a knife and cut his foreskin out. That is what the Bible is telling you. <laughs> Do you see? Uh -huh. That is where circumcision started, right? Mm -hmm. So this is very funny. So chapter 4, verse 118, God has cursed him, that is what he believes. For he said, I will take an ordained share of your servant, right? 
Then verse 119, chapter 4, verse 119. And I, the devil, will mislead them, and I will make them a spy. I will command them to let them slit the ears of livestock, just like we see happening to the cattle, the cow. People cut their ears and livestock. Of, uh-huh. And I will command them to let them change the creation of God. Right? When a kid is giving birth to, right? The foreskin is part of the creation. They will cut it off. Somebody will say, why is it that we cut the hair and the, uh, and the fingernails? That is a different instance of the body. Your fingernails is not your skin. They grow and they can even go out they, by themselves. Your hair grows, it can go off by itself. So cutting the hair, cutting the fingernails has nothing to do against God. But we are talking about skin, something on your skin. It is not something that uh, God made a mistake to put the foreskin there. No. Somebody will say, well, why do they cut our umbilical cord? Because it's an external thing. It's not part of your skin. No. You understand? So God says, the devil is now saying in the Quran, I will command them to let them change the creation of God. So what happens? You go and circumcise your kids and say this is imperfect. So now you are smarter than God. You have to do the perfect one. Ask yourself, when Adam was created, was he circumcised? When, when Noah was created was on earth, was he circumcised? How is it that Jesus, uh, Abraham has to get to 99 years before getting circumcision? And how come the Quran doesn't confirm this act? So why are the mushriks taking up this act? So let me show you where they got it. So after this verse, then God says, and whoever takes the devil as an ally besides God, then he has lost by a clear loss. So it is obvious the devil is the one telling you to change the creation of God. Just like women who are created dark, but they want to bleach and become something else. Right? They want to change the skin from black, dark, to become something else. That's against God. Right? Somebody will say, oh, what about uh, doing the tattoo on the skin? Tattoo wasn't inspired by God. God didn't ask you to go and design something on your skin. Right? So you're changing the creation of God. That's the instance there. Where did God ask you to do tattoo? So who are you doing it for on your skin? You have to think twice. For people who have done it in the past, it has already happened. You cannot change that. It has already happened. Right? We don't go back to the past. But then you have to learn from your mistakes and see what God is cautioning you over. Right? Uh Aha. So then it continues, verse 120, chapter 4, verse 120. And he, the devil, promises them and raises their hopes, but the devil only promised them what? Delusion. You see? So I'm going to show you where the instance of circumcision comes from. But remember, Quran chapter 32, verse 7 to verse 9, the way God created us, he told us he created us in a perfect form already. Right? That's why when a baby is born, unless if he have any some uh, surgical issues whereby it has the baby has to go in a in a uh, uh, in a let's say deformed uh, form and then something has to be fixed. But other than that, when you are created as a normal human being, what is the need for the circumcision? Who who instructed that? Let any Muslim step forward and show me in the Quran where God says when a baby is born after seven days or eight days you have to circumcise them. It doesn't exist. And God says what? Quran chapter 6, verse 115. The word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. So how come we don't find it in the complete word of God? Why is there no circumcision here? Why doesn't he say you should circumcise your kids? Was Muhammad himself circumcised? Bring your evidence. I'm waiting. Bring your best hadith books. Let's see where it says Muhammad was circumcised. It doesn't exist. So let's move on. I'm going to show you the evidence from where they get this instance from, right? And show you where it comes from. Uh, Somebody says what? Let me me show you the comment somebody said. He says, if bleaching is against God, then 90% of our Zongo girls will go to hell. Oh, boy. (laughs) Hey. Hey, a large Africa, I see you. A large Africa. Yes, mashallah. Uh, Tujis, the realist says, is it haram for a man to wear earrings? First of all, you have to pierce the skin. 
right? You have to pierce the skin, and that is a problem. Of course, these are considered mistakes we do or sins we commit, and there is forgiveness. It doesn't mean there is no turning back. You understand? Uh -huh. We have all done mistakes in our past. Even Musa, alayhi salam, he killed somebody by mistake in the past. Are you saying just because of that he'll go to hell? No. Those are mistakes we did, and we learn from that, right? Uh-huh. So piercing, I wouldn't consider piercing to be a good thing to be done by a man, right? Or even a woman, right? It doesn't take years to be pierced for people to realize that this is a woman. We are in the Western world. A lot of women don't have their ears pierced, but we can see they are women. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So Tujis, that is your, your answer to your question you ask. It says, is it a ram for a man to wear earrings? So that is the... Yeah, uh huh. So let me see. Um, somebody says, Did you circumcise your children or not? Be sincere. I'm not here to answer that stupid question, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody say, Are you not to? What's the question? Uh, he says, Why don't you call? Uh huh. Yeah, I'll open the phone lines. You can call, you ask your questions. Abdul Basiu says the Quran is for Allah alone. Why will he be talking about circumcision of the prophets in it? I don't understand you. Then why are people doing circumcision to their kids? Where did he command that? I don't understand you. Uh yeah, salam, biggie, salam. Uh, Salis Naganka. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Salis. Uh, okay, let's let's go on. Somebody was saying what? I want to know how prayers came about and fasting. Brother, they are all in the Quran. <laughs> fasting is in the Quran, Siam, and Salat is in the Quran, right? So you need to study the Quran to get your answers there, right? So unless you, you make your question specific. Usman, uh, Lahori Ma Idrisu says, are you circumcised yourself? Well, I didn't circumcise yourself, myself, or neither did I have the power to do that myself, right? It depends on my parents. Now, when you, your parents do something to you, it is the parent who decided that. You didn't decide that as a kid, right? Uh -huh. But when you check the Bible, let me give you the example. If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 23 to verse 27, it says, and Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with his money, uh, that, that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's what, house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day, as God has said unto him. So according to the Bible, God said this to Abraham. But he never said it to Adam. He never said this to uh, Noah. He never said to Enoch, uh, other prophets before uh, Abraham, right? So are you saying they are going to hell because they were not circumcised? How does circumcision... Oh, my God. Then verse 24, And Abraham was 99 years old, and nine, 99 years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. <laughs> so Abraham was 99 years before he got circumcised. Who circumcised him? Maybe he did it himself. Verse 25, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son, circumcised. Were they eight, eight days old or were they seven days old? So if Abraham did it at 99 years old, Remember, he already copulated with his wife before they gave birth to Ishmael. Listen and listen carefully. Abraham used the same kotubotto to sleep with his wife and he gave birth to Ishmael. So is it now that he's 99 years that he has to circumcise his foreskin for what? Tell me, for which purpose? <laughs> the devil is clearly giving you a command that you are following. This is not from God. If it's from God, let, tell the mainstream Muslims to come and prove it in this book. It's not in the Quran. It's not from God. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. 
So if Abraham was 99 years old, why did God of the Bible wait for uh, Ishmael to be 13 years old before being circumcised? Why? And this is where some of the Muslims, the mushriks, they get their evidence from. They don't even follow the Quran. I told you, they are mushriks. Uh -huh. They follow the Bible more than the Christians and the Jews. All the men of his house, born in the house and bought with money, the slaves, the strangers were circumcised with him. So Abraham was 99 years when he was circumcised after giving birth, already giving birth to what? Ishmael with the Kotiboto. <laughs> and then Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised, according to the Bible. Well, I don't believe it is the word of God. No, this is the devil instructing people to do that. Yes, it's not from God. Aha. Uh -huh. According to the same Bible, they said Jesus was circumcised at the eighth day. I think seventh or eighth day. Yes, they said Jesus himself was circumcised. How can somebody you claim is, is, is God or son of God being circumcised again? Which means God didn't create him perfectly. So now he has to come for some people to alter the skin on him to be perfect. So Genesis chapter 17, verse 10 to verse 15. And the uncircumcised man, child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that shoal shall be cut off from his people. And he has broken my covenant. This is a lie. God never said this. Where is it confirming the Quran? The Quran is a confirmation of what was before it. If God reveals something in the past, he will confirm it in his own book. How come it is not confirmed in the Quran? Why is it not the part of the mythak, the covenant God has given us? So this is a, clearly a lie. Circumcision is a lie. It's the biggest scam the people have fallen into by cutting the foreskin of their kids. It makes no sense, right? Full of contradictions. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So circumcision doesn't make sense at all. It never makes sense at all. <laughs> so especially the mushriks, they've taken it to the extent to even do to girls. They try to circumcise girls as well. Yes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So no wonder these mushriks can even represent pedophilia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, greetings, uh, Slamzat. Yes, that's what we have. Uh, uh, <laughs> Robert, Robert Jones says what? Abraham, Ibrahim did so to enjoy more. Oh my God. <laughs> At 99 years old, he has to now circumcise to enjoy what? To enjoy what? Kwekwe <laughs> Wanam uh, says, I was circumcised. Uh -huh. And he says, he, 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 what performs better? Is it true? But guys, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> I beg, stop lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. You see how they try to lie to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yusuf, Yusuf Maiga says, how can an old old man circumcise himself? Does it make sense? What kind of gibberish is this? You are saying a 99 years old man circumcised himself. For what? After already enjoying the Tonga to give birth to Ishmael, you are now saying he circumcised himself. To do what again? To enjoy what? Oh my God. Aha. Okay. Le let me continue so that I don't distract myself. Uh, I'll give a chance for, for calls to come in. Uh, did God mention that you should cut off the umbilical cord after a child is born? Brother, umbilical cord is not part of the skin. Umbilical cord is an external thing. Use your common sense, please. Ask ask uh, straight questions. Don't ask, you know, such questions like that. Is the 99 names of Allah found in the Quran or in the Hadith? There is nothing like 99 names in the Quran, right? There is nothing like 99 names of God in the Quran. And according to the Hadith people, the 99 names they have, listen, the 99 names they have doesn't have the name Allah inside. Quran chapter 17 verse 110, Allah is part of the names of God. Yes, it's a name. Allah is a name, right? 
So 99 names doesn't exist in the Quran. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, greetings, Antonia Mo. I see you. Long time, bro. Uh, who is this guy? Muhammad Nur he says, I'm done with you already, Shaitan. Uh, you are done with Shaitan. Okay, no problem. Okay, let me continue before everything gets stalled up. So we can see the evidence of circumcision comes from the Bible. And it's a lie. It's coming from the devil. It's not from God. And the Mushriks, they have taken this and they do it. The Sunnis, the Shia, the Tijaniyas, all of them, they do this. So ask them to come and prove to you to the Quran. Where does it say circumcision? Why is it that Abraham did it at the, nine, the, the, year of, uh, the age of 99 years? Why can't you do it later? Why is it that he did it to Ishmael, Ishmael at the age of 13 years? And now the same Bible is now saying after eight days when a kid is born, they have to circumcise him. That is a lie. This is a fabrication. This is a concussion. It is not from God. If it's from God, why is it not confirmed in the Quran? Where is it? Out of coverage area. Was Adam circumcised? Was Noah circumcised? Was Muhammad circumcised? How to Burana Kumain Kuntum Swadikin? You are liars. Now let's go on to translation. Some people will say, why are you translating the Quran and why are you giving your own interpretation? Right? Because you lack common sense. So let's see how the verse says. Quran chapter 44, verse 58. Quran chapter 44, verse 58. Let's see what God says. So God says, فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And we have only, listen, we have only made it easy. Made it, يَسَّرْنَاهُ The who is a damir, is a masculine pronoun attributing to the book, the Quran. فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ by your language, by your tongue, is talking to Muhammad alayhi salam. Then God says, La Allahum yatazakkarun, and so that they might take heed, or they will be what? Mindful. You see, so God has made the Quran easy in the language or in the tongue of the Prophet in order for him to be able to deliver such a message. Oh, sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. In order for him to be able to deliver the message, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, Bizil, Bizil B, they are just here to, to dis, uh, distract me. Uh, Nas, the love says, which of the names are found in the Quran? Yes, I will, I will give you a list. For, for instance, even in this Quran, I have it at the last page. Uh, for people who have the PDF, you can go, you find the best names of God. I have it here, Allah in the Quran. And I gave the notes and it is up to, the best names are mentioned up to 60. Right? 60 names of God found in the Quran. Here. Then we have the attributes of God in the Quran. Then it goes on and on. So you combine the names of God, the attributes of God, and the qualities of God all in the Quran. There's nothing like 99 names of God in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Right? So you can inbox me. I can send you this file alone, this file. And then you can check the names and the references. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So... Uh, Ot Otutu Jagu says... Uh, he says what? He says, when did Muhammad meet Angel Gabriel in the cave and at what age? He never even met any angel in the cave, right? It doesn't exist. It is the Sahih Bukhari books, the lies. Those are the ones saying all those lies. It's not, it's not coming from God. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from God at all. Yeah. Let me see here. Yeah, sorry, just, just a second. Uh, somebody sent me a message. Let me see. Uh, Ak Isaac Amen says, where did Cain find found his wife? By the way, the God of the Quran never said Adam and Eve only had two kids. No, he never said that. 
right? But among the children of Adam, we have two kids who had the problem. They had the fight. But it doesn't say those are his only children. No. And again, Quran talks about the creating of Bashar and then Insan in two instances in the Quran. There is Bashar, there is Insan. So among people, we have Bashar and we have Insan. We have Bashar and we have Insan which is we have uh, 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 like a, a plain human being, a normal human being. Then we have, is it, if I remember very well, is it, uh, is it, homo, we have homi, hominoid, is it hominoid and something like homo sapiens and uh, I, I need to do a, a topic on this to, to break it down more, right? Uh-huh. So let me, let me answer the, the issue of translation before I give the chance for phone call. Let me do it faster. So Quran chapter 7, verse 52 to verse 53. Quran chapter 7, verse 52 to verse 53. Let's see what the Quran says. Uh, Jamila, Jamila Ramzi says, Seto is condemning Islam. What do you have to say about that? So far, the, the programs I've done with Setu, he never condemned the Islam I am following. He never did that. What you think Setu is condemning is the mainstream doctrines, the mushriks. That is what Setu is condemning. So it always sounds like you think he's condemning Islam. He's condemning that Islam you mix hadith inside. Right? You mix the garbages inside. Those, that is the Islam is condemning. If he's condemning something, why will he bring him, me to interview me and to know more about what the Quran says? So that is the difference, Jamila. So get it right. Sato is not actually condemning the, the truth. He's condemning the concept of Islam you guys have depicted out there. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yes. So he's condemning the Hadith. Exactly. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> So, uh, yes, I just answered this question. That is Jamila, uh, is it uh, Jamila Ramzi? That's what I just answered his question. Uh -huh. Yes, as for what he says, uh, Jamila Ramzi, if you say Sato says the Quran is not a book of God, everybody has the right to make the claim they want. That, is it illegal for him to say that? He can say that. Yours is just to prove to him that it's the book of God. And that is the one of the things I do. I go on his platform in order to show him evidences. This is how you, con you convince people. Are you expecting him to just say the Quran is a book of God without investigating? <laughs> do, you, do you get my point? So allow him to say that. So far as he doesn't insult the concept of, uh, you know, the, the, the truth. If you give somebody the truth and he condemns it and insults it, that's a problem. But so far as he is making a claim, he's, he has the right to make the claim he wants. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, brother. Is it? Uh, Akomo Lafe. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyways, let's, let's move on because my time is getting uh, stalled here. Let's move on. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 7, verse 52 to verse 53. It says, Walakad jinahum bikitab and fasalnahu ala ilm huden wa rahmatan likomi yuminun. Right? And we have suddenly brought them a book which we have what? Detailed, which means elaborated upon what? Knowledge. So the Quran comes with knowledge inside, right? Knowledge and guidance. It has guidance as well as what? Mercy for people who believe. So people who believe in the book, they find knowledge there. They find guidance there and they find mercy in there. But the interesting part of this knowledgeable book is God says, Are they waiting only for its interpretation? So if God have brought a book based on knowledge, which has been detailed with knowledge and guidance and mercy for people who believe, are you going to just sit down and wait for the interpretation when you are supposed to hurry up and, and get the 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 interpretation to know what it says do you understand what i mean you have to make the effort to understand what the book says instead of just sitting down for your scholars to come and lie to you the teacher teaching you if you don't study 
if they make a mistake, who, who will correct them? If you don't study, if you, the student, you don't study to find answers for yourself, when a teacher who is teaching you makes a mistake, who will correct that teacher? So this is where you have to reason. God says we have brought them a book detailed upon knowledge or with knowledge and as guidance and mercy for people who believe. Are you not curious enough to know the interpretation of such a book? Do you see? So God is now saying in Quran chapter 7 verse 53, are they waiting only its tawil, its interpretation? The day its interpretation comes, those who forgot it before will say the messengers of our Lord had brought the truth. So do we have any intercessors to intercede for us? Or could we return to do other than what we used to do? They will have lost their souls and what they used to fabricate diverted from them. Do you see the consequence here? So now it is incumbent on you and I to find the interpretation of what God is saying in his knowledgeable book. You have to. Do you see? You have to. Then again, it says in Quran chapter 10 verse 39. Quran chapter 10 verse 39. The reason why you have to know the interpretation of the book. You need to get the knowledge because the book itself is based on knowledge. The book itself is based on knowledge. So it has knowledge inside. So if you get the knowledge of the book, what you need to do is you get the interpretation of what you have studied. So that is why Quran chapter 41 verse 3 says, A book whose verses have been explained, uh, elaborated as an Arabic reading for people who know. So for people who know, they will get the interpretation of what the book says because they know, they have the knowledge of the book, right? So Quran chapter 10 verse 39 says bal kazzabu bima lam yuhituhu bi ilmihi wa lamma yatihim tawilu kazalika kazzaba allazina min qablihim fanzuru kayfa kana akibatu zalimin In fact they have denied what they have not encompassed its knowledge and whose interpretation has not yet come to them Likewise did those before them deny so observe how was the end of the transgressors right so finding the interpretation of the book, you first need to have the knowledge of the book, then you can get the interpretation. Because we have people who deny it whilst they have not encompassed its knowledge. You need to encompass the knowledge of the, uh, of the book before you get the interpretation. If I don't have knowledge in English, how can I explain something in English for somebody? Do you get my point? So I need to encompass a particular aspect of knowledge in order to interpret it to somebody else. Do you see how it works? So the book itself is based on knowledge, Quran chapter 7, verse 52. So yours is now, after getting acquiring the knowledge, you need to know the interpretation. That is how you can give to somebody what the book says. If I don't have knowledge of the Quran, how can, it, how can I translate this Quran? Remember, the Quran itself is a translation. Because whatever God spoke to Jesus, whatever God said to Moses, he didn't say it in Arabic language. He said it in their own languages. Quran chapter 14 verse 4. God never sends a messenger except in the language of his people in order to clarify for them. Right? So if God sends you in the language that you can clarify to people, and let's say the message given was maybe in Arabic language and God has chosen me to go to my people. I need to first have knowledge of this book. Then I can give the interpretation to somebody else in another language. That is the meaning of this. So stop listening to scholars who tell you, oh, the Quran, you don't need to translate it. It has to be in Arabic language. Are you a fool? Is that all the people in the world? Are they, do they understand Arabic? So if you don't translate it in another language, how can somebody know this is what is being meant? You understand? So this is why we have the Arabic text next to the English text so that it can be cross-checked. If somebody is translating something with lies, we can cross-check and see whether it's lying or not. Right? Whatever God said to Adam, 
it wasn't in Arabic language. Whatever happened among the people of children of Israel, it wasn't in Arabic language. But then God has to translate it in Arabic and tell you and I in the Quran. So similarly, we take the Quran, we have to still translate it in other languages in order for message to spread. It's simple as ABC. Yeah. So when you go to Quran chapter 27 verse 84, Look at the question God is going to ask us on the day of judgment. Quran chapter 27 verse 84. Yes, that is Surah Al-Namal. Quran chapter 27 verse 84, right? Uh, Abdul Samad Adam says, did Quran say about Gog and Magog? Yes, it says that. You can get in Surah Al-Anbiya chapter 21 verse 96 and you read downwards. Ya Juju Ma Juju Ade. If you go to Quran chapter 18, you start reading from verse uh, verse 88. Downwards, it talks about Gog and Magog. They are the corruptors of the earth. Wherever they are, they do corruption. Because whenever you see corruption anywhere, Yajuj and Majuju are there. They are full of corruption. So it is the description of corrupted people who cause corruption on earth. Yeah, that is Yajuj or Majuj. So that is their signature, their sign of knowing who they are. Right? Corruption. Wherever you see corruption, that means Gog and Magog have arrived. They are there. Right? Mm-hmm. So now I take you to Quran chapter 27, verse 84, right? And this is what it says. Until when they arrive, he, God, will say, did you deny my verses while you have not encompassed them in knowledge? Or what did you do? Right? We have people who reject something even though they have not studied it. They have not gone around it to see what it encompasses, but they will just reject it upright. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So this is why it's good to investigate things to ask questions in order to know more so that you can benefit from it. Aha, uh -huh, you understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So if without asking questions, important questions to learn, and this is where you miss every detail about this. Thank you very much, Liman Imrana. I appreciate that. Aha, uh -huh. so you need to ask right questions, get the right answers, then you keep learning. You keep asking for references, evidences. You study for yourself. Quran chapter 17 verse 36 says, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. If you don't have knowledge in something, don't pursue it. So this is why you need to study for yourself and find the evidences to the truth. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, to top it all, we can see that Quran chapter 26 verse 197, the scholars among the children of Israel, they know the Quran. So if they don't study the language and know the interpretation, how can they know what the Quran says? You understand? Quran chapter 26 verse 197 similarly quran chapter 46 verse 10 to verse 12 it is uh similarly said there somebody among the children of israel bear witness to the similar like of the quran and he believes it in, he believed in it right so before the quran the book of moses was a what a mercy and a guide for the people and this confirms arabic language uh also uh for, and to warn people with it Right? That is the Quran. It confirms the Arabic language to the people. Right? Uh -huh. So now, the last part before I open the phone calls, Quran chapter 48 verse 2. Now, this verse is very interesting. Sectarians like to quote this verse out of context. Uh, let me show you one, one uh, the type of stupid people the Quran talks about. Do you see this kind of people? These are the kind of stupid people God is talking about. Do you see? He says, you having the audacity to condemn the good actions and sayings, hadith, of the holy prophet. You see the foolish people. You see he's calling the prophet holy. Now, so this is the kind of people I spoke about pre prior to this, right? He's calling the prophet holy. Now, these are the worshippers of the prophet. So then he says, shows you are confused and misguided. He is now telling me I'm misguided. Now, look clearly. That is his name, Cardinal Kamara. So these are the stupid people I'm talking about. Do you see him? Aha. Uh -huh. The garbages they follow, the Sahih Bukhari books they follow, they are tagging that as the sayings of the prophet. Are you in your right senses? Or are you just dumb and foolish? <laughs> oh, what a waste of time. Your parents should regret giving birth to you. Wallahi, Salis, repeat, Kumar. 
<laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, don't mind him. Uh, slam that. Those people, they think marrying CCS old girl is a good action to, to copy. Let them go and copy. These are the pedophiles I'm talking about in the community. If you don't abolish the nonsense, you make some Arabs write for you and say these are the sayings of the prophet. Are you a fool? Do you think your prophet will give you those garbage books you are following? You claim the sayings of the prophet. You are, you are nuts if you think those are the sayings of the prophet. Now let's let's let me go to, to this evidence. They will go to Quran chapter 48, verse 2, and they quote it out of context. And I'm going to help you to understand the verses, how the verses are, are, are talking about. Huh? God is telling the prophet, Then he says, now check clearly what the verse is saying it has nothing to do with god forgiving what is gone and what is coming it doesn't say what is coming please understand the arabic arabic grammar don't let the scholars like to you and tell you that this is why the prophet is holy you'll be a fool to think this verse is talking about the sins he's going to do in the future has been forgiven you will be a fool to think like that. And I'm going to help you to understand the verse. Quran chapter 48 verse 2. When you start from verse 1, it says, Indeed, we have dedicated to you a clear contest, a uh, conquest. That is, uh, Fathan Mubina, a clear conquest. Right? Verse 2, that God may forgive you what was sent forth. That is what you sent forth of your sin. Meaning he has already committed the sin. And what was held back? Ta'akhara means to hold something back. Something you didn't do. You wanted to commit a sin, but you didn't do. That is holding it back. That is what God is talking about, forgiving him. He never said the sins that are coming in the future. It's a lie. <laughs> in Arabic, we don't say akhara, something which is coming. Akhara means something which is like, you know, held back. Uh -huh. So he said, and complete his blessing upon you and guide you to a straight path. So now I'm going to understand Kaddama wa Akhara. I'm going to uh, explain to you how to understand this concept. The Mushriks, they quote the verses out of context to put their own garbage hadith there and to lie to the people. And I'm going to help you to break that, uh, you know, chain away so that you can understand the Quran in the best form. So I'm taking you to Quran chapter 75, verse 13. Let's understand what God meant by this. Quran chapter 75, verse 13. On the day of judgment, listen what God says. Yunabbahul insanu yawmaizin bima kaddama wa akhar. On that day, on the day of judgment, the human being will be informed on that day uh, what he sent forth and what he held back. Kaddama wa akhara. Kaddama, kaddam means something sent forth. Akhara means something you held back. All will be shown to you on the day of judgment. So underline the word kaddama wa akhara. It doesn't mean, uh, akhara doesn't mean something coming in the future. Listen and listen carefully. The scholars have been lying to you. Wallahi. Aha. So kaddama wa akhara, kaddama is used for something sent forth. So the sins you have already sent forth, God will show you on the day of judgment. Akhara means something you decided to do, but you held it back. Maybe your intentions, you wanted to go and steal, you didn't do it again. God will still show you on the day of judgment. These are your intentions. So akhara means something held back. So when God was saying in Quran chapter 48 verse 2, he is telling the prophet, ma takhara, ah? God says what? Whatever you send forth of your sin. Ta'akhara means what you held back. Not what is coming in the future. Stop fooling yourselves, mushriks. Aha, understand the Arabic grammar. It is not telling the prophet your sins coming in the future. Don't be a fool to think ta'akhara means future. Aha. So now again, 
I take you to Quran chapter 82, verse 15. Let's understand Kaddama wa Akhara. What does it mean? So God says on the day of judgment, Alimat nafsun ma kaddamat wa akharat. On the day of judgment, a soul will know what it has sent forth and what akharat and held back. So whatever a soul did, that's kaddamat, you sent forth of your sin, we will see it. Whatever you acted, you will see it. Then whatever you held back, because God knows what is in your heart, you will come and see it on the day of judgment. So Quran chapter 48 verse 2, it is not telling the prophet that we forgive you the sins you did in, you, you, you did earlier, you sent forth the Kaddama, and we are forgiving you what is coming in the future. Tarakhara doesn't mean future. Stop fooling yourselves. Yes. Tell the mushriks to stop fooling people. It doesn't say I'm forgiving the prophet in the future. What kind of foolish ideology is this? Are you telling us that the prophet should go again and see? They will tell you oh, the prophet does not sin. Are you a fool? Chapter 47, verse 19, God asked him to ask for forgiveness. If he doesn't make mistake or sin, will they say he should ask for forgiveness? Chapter 40, verse 55, if he doesn't make a mistake or sin, will they say he should ask for forgiveness? Are you a fool? Why are you venerating the prophet to an instant God never took him? Do you think he's a superhuman? He's a, damn, he's a human being like you. The difference is he has been given a post as a prophet and a messenger. Just like today, I'm a human being just like my president in Ghana. But the difference is he's a president and I'm not. That's the difference. If you slap me, slap him and see whether he will not feel the pain. So why fooling yourself taking the prophet to an instant God never took him? Quran chapter 38 verse 45 to verse 48. The best prophet, the sixth best prophet God mentioned. Prophet Muhammad's name is not there. And you keep disturbing us, he's the best of creation. Are you nuts? Mushriks. <clears throat> ah, kumbi kun da memu ku ishe mu kullu aka. Ah, azwana magana ina muka manki an nabi. The mushriks are so foolish in their thoughts. I don't understand how they are understanding the deen. Why will you be joining garbage books trying to explain the words of God when God himself is the perfect explainer of the Quran? Quran chapter 11 verse 1. He is the one who explains the Quran. Quran chapter 24 verse 18, he is the one who clarified the verses. Quran chapter 6 verse 105, he is the one who clarified the book for us. Quran chapter 41 verse 3, he is the one who has already explained his verses. And you are still forcing and foolishly telling us that the prophet is the one to explain the Quran. When the Quran itself is explained, then they will say he was sent to the Arabs to teach them. He was only there to teach the Ummiyuna. The Ummiyina he went to teach. According to you, the Mushriks, you are saying illiterates. If they are illiterate, am I an illiterate? Does a learned person need somebody from the desert to come and teach him again? When God has already explained his own book, you'll be a fool to think the Hadith are the book, is the book explaining this. Bring me one Hadith you have, which explains Bakara, the full chapter, Bakara. Bring me one single Hadith. I put a challenge out there. I'll give you a thousand euro. Bring me one single Hadith which I explained Bakara in full. Wallahi, I will become a mushrik tomorrow if you can bring me that hadith. Mushrik uh, kawai. Muhammad Mutawakil, thank you for being a fan. Let me drink water. Thank you for being my number one fan, Muhammad. <laughs> this mushrik, they just love me. I don't know why. They hate me so much that they love me. They have to sit down hours and listen to me. <laughs> Allah mushrik Mm. <laughs> I'm worrying them too much. They don't even understand the Quran. And they keep disturbing us with garbage books saying these garbage books are the one going to uh, explain the Quran for us. Ah, Common, common Arabic grammar they don't understand. Huh? You come and say it is talking about these future sins. How can God tell him, I forgive you your future sins? Oh, so that means he was he was seen in the future, and God is telling him, "I will forgive you your future sins." Ah. Mm. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to bring the topic to an end. Let me see. My time is up. Uh, I put here.
Okay, I put my number here. Anya Mufti, I love you too. Thank you. Okay, I put my number here. You can call now. I just have some few minutes to end the program. You can call and ask questions based on what I've explained. Your questions are welcome. Call and ask questions. Yeah, wa alaikum salam. This is Muhammad, US. Yes, Muhammad, nice to meet you. You're welcome. How can we help you? Um, yeah, please, I call to find for the wrong things. This one. You what? So I call to find all certain things uh, in Islam. Okay, but we don't have much time. So you can ask two questions and let's go. Okay. Uh, I want to know what holy means. What holy means in which language? Literally in English. What word? When we say holy, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. When we say holy, it is something belonging to associated with a divine power. Divine power? Yes. It, can you please explain further? I don't get you. When we say divine power, something which has to do with a supreme being like God, you understand? Holy. Or when we say yeah. Ruhul Kudus, we can say God is Al Kudus, He is the Holy Himself. And then we can say Ruhul Kudus, something which is associated with God in a divine power. So let's say Ruh. Holy Spirit. When we say Ruhul Kudus, chapter 16, verse 102, that is, uh, and something God Himself made holy, we can tag as Kudus, holy. Yes. So can holy also mean a different thing apart from what you just explained? Then you tell us. Now, because I came across uh, different meanings of holy, uh, some talks about you being submitted to your creator, like de being devoted to praying to your creator means you are holy. No, you don't become holy. You can, I mean, a human being can become pure, meaning to be wiped up out from sins. We use the word pure, but we don't use the word holy. Holy is something from beginning already. You understand? Which means that that thing has never been contaminated with sin. That is what can classify something as holy. For instance, we cannot say Ruhul Kudus has sinned or it has sins with him. We cannot say God has sins with him. You understand? So those okay. act, acts can be considered by a human being who has been dead with sin before. How can you classify him as holy when he was not holy in the first day? How did he okay. become holy? Okay. That sounds better. Okay, let me ask my second question. Please. Yes. I also want to know about the differences between uh, Allahu Akbar and Allahu Kabir. Allahu Akbar and Allahu Kabir. When we say Al Kabir, it means the great. Now, whenever we use Al Kabir for God, which means God is the best, not, nothing else is superior than God, nothing else is over God. So when you call God Al Kabir, you seal the argument. But the moment you call God Allahu Akbar, Al Akbar. When we say Akbar, it becomes a cipher of sin. In Arabic, that is in English, we say a superlative form. Now, whenever you say good, better, best, or you say great, greater, greatest, the moment you say somebody is the greatest, which means there is another one below him. So Akbar doesn't mean great, it means greatest. Yes, in Arabic, Akbar doesn't mean great. Great in Arabic is Kabir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, can I please ask my last question, please? No problem. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Um, I want to know whether the Quran categorically mentioned uh, you using Surah uh, Fatiha to call on Him, or you decided to use it to call on God. That's your last question, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyways, can I drop you before I answer the question? Because I don't want you to move no. forward with further questions. Yes. No, please. I want to be online, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem, Mohammed. Now, when we say Fatiha, it means opener or opening. Something you use to open something. Now, 
since it says Fatiha, when you start reading Fatiha, Fatiha is the only chapter in the book which addresses to God directly, which is the only one being attributed to God alone. So when you start reading Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin Ar Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawm Al Din Iyak Yana Abu Wa Iyak Yana Astaim Then you tell God Ehdina Surat Al Mustaqim. Now you can see it's a supplication, it's an invocation which is only only attributed to God. You are earnestly calling on God to guide you, and you are telling Him the favors you want from Him, right? So for every intellectual person. When you take such a thing from the Quran, you know this is something I can use as an opening act to address my God with it. It's just like a telephone number. Without my phone number, you can't call me right now. So if you see a phone number, must anybody tell you take this phone number and call Shaheed? You already know what to do. Okay. So do you need to perform ablution before doing that? No. Ablution is only for salat. Chapter five, verse six. So it has only salat you need to do ablution. So the way we are doing it, is it the right way? Which one? Like the way we normally, they, they taught us. Who taught you? Our imams, when you grew up, you know, as a young guy, what you used to do? Okay. In the past, I've done that before, but I don't do that anymore. I only do according to the Quran. That is the guidance of God. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Let me pick up the next caller because we keep going if we stay online. Thank you for your time. Let me pick the next caller. Uh, Richard, oh, frame me, but me call now disconnecting. Yes. Hello. Hello. Salam. Hello. Yeah, wa alaikum salam. I can hear you. Can you talk uh, up? Speak up, please. Where are you? Okay. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm Kweku. Aha, uh -huh, Kweku. Yeah, nice to meet you, Kweku. Please, I'm Kweku. Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Since I'm not getting you. Uh -huh, but I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, my, I just I just want to hear you as well so that uh, yeah, I don't problem. Stay I, the line a, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay uh ask ask your question. I'm listening. I only have a few minutes, please. Oh sorry, sorry. Let me call back. Okay. Uh next caller. Uh, somebody called. Who was that? Somebody. <clears throat> yes. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hello, Richard. Uh, good evening. Oh, good evening. How are you? Yeah, yeah I'm cool. Mm. And uh, also good evening to your listeners. Yeah, thank you. In fact, uh, 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 I must say you are doing a great job, but uh, then I have a few questions. But no for problem. the sake of your time, um, let me see other I can give you uh, three questions. Now, uh, you made mention of uh, New Testament and Old Testament, uh, not original Bible. So, to my understanding, uh, you are making a claim. If I if I if I say your phone, you are you are holding iPhone 12 or iPhone iPhone uh, 12. Oh, let's say iPhone iPhone 12 Pro, and I said your iPhone you are holding is not original iPhone. Definitely, I have to I have to prove to you the original iPhone. I have to show you the original copy. Am I right? No. I have to show you the original iPhone before I can condemn your iPhone data. Your your iPhone is is not original. So now my question is, where is the original Bible? I want you to I want you to prove to me the original Bible. That's that's my first question. Okay. And again, 
No, no, let's let's go with the first question. Jesus was not killed. Can you hear me? There was no crucified. Can you hear me? Can you tell us the person who was crucified on the cross? The name of the person and uh, the person, the sin of the person. I want to know uh, that that one also, and also where did Muhammad? Uh, get his prophecy from he said it's not from the cave so where did muhammad got this uh, uh revelation from and can you prove to us that it's true uh, uh, uh from god or from where i thank think i'm, I'm giving you three questions okay no problem let me let me answer your questions thank you for your questions richard yeah <clears throat> You know, first of all, he asked a question and concerning the Bible, and he mis misquoted me, right? And he is saying, if you say something is not original, you must be able to prove to bring the original. <laughs> you understand? In the first place, you can have a phone whereby maybe the manufacturer told me that if I check the serial number, there's a sequence I need to check with it to see if it's original or not. So when you bring a book claiming to be from God, mine is just to check to see, does it meet the criteria of contradictions or you know something which doesn't match? So a book claiming to be from God needs to be scrutinized, examined, contemplated in order to disprove it. So if I disprove something and tell you this is not from God, I don't, I, I don't need to be the one to go and bring the original to you. It's just like a student who has a fake certificate. Listen a fake certificate from a school and say this is coming from this school if he is disproving that this certificate is not original you don't expect me to go and bring the original and say oh this is his original certificate so that means that one before that one is false no i need to stand on that certificate to assess some things to to, to disprove it and say no this cannot be the original one you understand so first of all god never mentioned any book called new testament neither does he say old testament people formulated that apart from that there is nothing called Holy Bible by any other prophets, right? So people will say, oh, the Bible just is a Greek word. It's a Greek word. That means you can say book. If you say book, where does it say holy book? Nowhere. Where does it say this book you are holding? That is the same book given to the prophets or any other prophet. Nowhere. So Jesus himself, he never even hold this New Testament you are holding in your hands. Because Jesus is not a Greek. And this New Testament, the original verse is in Greek language. So that is the, the first uh, say, uh, problem at the first place. Then again, he mentioned about the crucifixion of Jesus. Then he said, I should prove and show the person's name and who was crucified. It is God making the claim. I wasn't there. You were not there. The one who was there eternally, he is telling me and you that it was just a resemblance. Who was it? I don't know. Because even if you mention the name, we cannot even know who that person is. It's just like if I mention somebody from my family that you don't know my family. If I say his name is Kojo Kum, what does the name benefit you? If I say he was born in the 19, 1900, how does it benefit you? You understand? It is just about the lessons behind the story is what is relevant to the cause, not uh, the other instance. You understand? Uh-huh. So then he, uh, his last question, if I don't know, I remember clearly. If somebody remembers, you can just write for me because due to time, my time is up. I don't want to uh, waste the time on this so that uh, people can get to benefit from the instance. But if you're asking me, uh, I think his last question was concerning Prophet Muhammad. Where did Muhammad get the revelations from? He doesn't say he got it from the cave. He was living his normal life and got expression from god and revelation mm -hmm. right uh -huh. so that is the one he used mm -hmm. to actually tell the people the evidences mm -hmm. so concerning people who say he's not a messenger the evidence is in quran chapter 13 mm -hmm. verse 43 you can check that mm -hmm. to get the evidence yes hello hello assalamu alaikum wa alaikum please i'm uh -huh. nice to meet you Uh, please, uh, uh, you mentioned Quran chapter 4, verse 157, and uh, you said that somebody was pleased uh, instead of Jesus, meaning uh, a resemblance of Jesus was placed on the, uh, on the cross. 
So I want to know where you, you got this from. I got it from the Quran. Hello? I got it from the Quran. Can you hear me? Please, did you get my question? I got your question. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can hear you now. Uh-huh. I said I got it from the Quran, chapter 4, verse 157. Yes. Uh, please, where is that? I think that should be her. Yes. Okay, from, from my understanding, I know should be her doesn't mean so. Somebody was pleased. The Quran didn't say somebody was uh, pleased there instead of Jesus. Is that is that how I said it? He said somebody was made in resemblance of Jesus. Let me read the verse again. Okay. And they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God, while they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. But it was a resemblance. For them it was a resemblance for them meaning the person they killed resembles jesus but it wasn't jesus that is why i'm saying that uh, the quran hasn't mentioned here that somebody was killed what it only says should be her there should be her i understand is that he was made to appear to them like one who was crucified. What is the meaning, meaning of Jesus? Brother, what is the meaning of Shubiha? Which word does it come from? Shabaha. Yes, and what does it mean? That is what I'm saying that uh, to, to, uh, to appear or to, to make, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what do you call it? We can say confuse. It can also mean confuse. Shabaha, give me the reference of your dictionary. It never means confuse. Okay. Give me the reference of your dictionary and show me where Shabbat means confusion. Okay, I'm coming. Just coming. I'm just coming right now. Mm. Yes. I'm saying is that uh, what do you call it? Well, I can should be her, should be her love. So the should be her means that somebody was made to appear to them, and the person that we are talking about here is Jesus Christ. Brother, did you understand my English? Did you understand my English? Uh -huh. The word shabiha, shubiha, that's the root word, is shabiha or shabaha. This shabiha, you said it means it means to appear, and I said it means resemblance, some resemblance. You said it is so. Give me the reference no. where you are getting the I'm meaning not, from. Resemblance, resemblance doesn't mean that I'm not but English word one word can have different meaning. But I'm saying that the resemblance that you said means doesn't mean that somebody was pleased instead of Jesus. But where did, did I say, say somebody was pleased? Mean? If a resemblance is used i'm giving you an instance if somebody mm -hmm. resembles donald trump and i slap somebody who, sla who resembles donald trump is it donald trump i slapped okay uh, I'm, also, I'm also giving you an i'm also giving you an example when we say that somebody ap appear to to to, uh, to be someone it doesn't it doesn't mean appear the word doesn't mean appear no, I'm just giving you a phrase. You was made to appear to them like one. Who and I said that Shabiha doesn't mean appear. <laughs> okay, let me go to my next question. Okay. Uh, my, next, my next question is from chapter 49, verse 13. Chapter what? Please, can you? Chapter 49, verse 13. Chapter 49, verse 13. Yes, uh -huh, I'm listening. Okay. 
So, uh, please, I want to, the last time you mentioned uh, something over there, so I want you to, you said uh, the righteous one, and I don't know if you have the verse, you can read it for, for, for us so that I will say something. God like, says, Ya you and Nas, inna halaknakum min zakarin wa, wa, wa untha. Then he says, Okay. Waja alna kum shu'uban wa kabaila litarafu. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he says, Inna akramakum in the lahi at kakum, in the laha alimun khadir. Nazua salim. Okay, I'm just looking for, I'm just, I'm saying verse 13. No? Yes, I'm reading verse 13. One, okay, the most honorable one from among you is the one that is the verse I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, it says that's the verse I'm reading. Nazua salim. Nazun do kiman nazua. Chapter 49, verse 13. Inna akramakum in the lahi at kabu. He says, the noblest of you, or the most okay. honorable of you in front of God. Listen, in front of God is the most pious of you. So, well, as the prophet pious or not? There is no way in the Quran where God ever says the prophet is the most pious. No, I'm not saying was pious. I'm saying was the prophet pious. According to you, was the prophet pious or not? Oh, yeah. He's a pious, devoted, uh, submitted to God. Yes. Okay. So since you accept that the prophet is pious, it means he's holy. Because the word pious means righteous, <laughs> godly, holy. It can have, I mean, if you go to synonyms, it also means holy. So there's nothing wrong when somebody says the prophet is holy. Brother, so you believe that brother, pious. brother, being pious yeah. doesn't make you holy. Please, I don't know who is teaching you, but the word pious doesn't make you holy. So the, the word pious also means uh, if you go to synonyms, the word pious also means righteous. The word pious can also mean uh, what do you call it, godly. The word pious can also mean uh, holy. So there is nothing wrong. It's just a synonym. So somebody can say righteous, brother, can say pious, brother, can brother. Quran chapter mm -hmm. two verse two says, "Zalik al kitabu la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin." He says it's a guidance mm -hmm. for those who are pious. Quran chapter two verse two. Right? Mm -hmm. Quran chapter two verse two. If I'm following the guidance of God, doesn't mean I'm holy, because I could sin at the same time, and I just showed the evidence from the Quran. If you are following God, doesn't mean you will not sin. So how can somebody who is bound to make mistake and sin, you are calling him holy? This is a simple logic, brother. Did, did you get me? I'm saying that you said, you said the prophet is holy. Uh, you said the prophet is, uh, prophet is pious. And I'm also saying that the prophet me, uh, being pious, you know, the pious also stands for holy. It also means holy. Brother, it doesn't so mean holy. Pious doesn't mean holy. I don't know who is teaching you. The word holy, you can, let me help you. The so word you holy, go, uh, uh, brother, you can go to Oxford Dictionary and forget and, about Oxford Dictionary. Dictionaries can give you different meanings. I'm just telling you, we are talking about the Quran, not dictionary. What the Quran says is what I'm saying. The Quran doesn't equate piousness with holiness. Give me one verse where Quran says, if you are pious, you are holy. Can you give me? I am just, I am just saying that the uh, pious also means righteous. Brother, or, or, brother, brother, righteous. listen to me. We are not okay. arguing. We are not arguing. Listen to me. Can you give okay. me one right. verse where God says, if you are pious, you are holy? No, no, no. You will not get something like that. Okay, then thank you. Thank you. Let me pick up the you. next caller. Thank you. Thank you for your point. I appreciate it. Thank you. I have found it to be uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me see. I think, uh, let me pick up last caller, then we go. The, the caller is just trying to make things. And these are the things people who try to formulate the mushrik concept, the idea of shirk in their head. I already explained the concept of holy to you. I gave you the dictionary. I gave you the reference from the Quran. I explained to you the concept of holy. God himself is al Qudus in the Quran. The Holy Spirit, Ruhul Qudus, chapter 16, verse 102, Al Qudus, which is it means from day one, that thing is already holy from God, right? There is nothing, or we have Wad al Muqaddasituha. God already made it holy from day one. It is not later on when somebody who is a sinner, then because he has repented, you call him holy. Or somebody who is bound to sin, because God asked the Prophet to ask forgiveness for his sins. 
Quran chapter 47 verse 19. Quran chapter 40 verse 55. He can sin even though he's pious. If you are a believer in God, doesn't mean you cannot make mistake or sin. So to call that person holy, that's the mistake there I'm quoting to you and you don't get it. So if I'm pious, doesn't mean I'm holy. Come on, who is teaching you? Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, last question before we, we, we go. Uh, let me see. I think somebody called. I didn't pick up. Let me see. Uh, who was the person who called? Uh huh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's, uh, let me see, who was this? Somebody. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I guess this is where I end the program for now. I need to attend to the kids. Uh, they need my attention. And like I said, you know, uh, stop twisting words out of context. Stop taking words out of context. Try to understand the context of what I'm telling you about. Whatever I'm saying, don't think I'm here showing mm -hmm. hatred to the prophet or I hate the prophet mm -hmm. or not, not none of the above. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, wa alaikum assalam. Um, um, my name is Ibrahim. I'm speaking from Ghana. Okay, nice to meet you, know. Ibrahim. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. I want to contribute to your program. I don't know what it is. Uh, yes. I, if you have a question, I can just take one question because my time is up. I have to end the program. Okay. Okay. Um. I have been listening to you for some time now, and during your teachings, I realized you were like, you don't uh, perform the daily five salats. And uh, today, what I heard from you is you said salat was mentioned in the Quran. So I don't know if it's possible you teach us how the salat in the Quran, which was mentioned, has been done. So that it should be of a benefit to us all. So your question is. Ina na baka puhelin kana sun puhel na baka na zwa baba ya baka puhel kaji ha orat jen na zwa na zwa kama puhel kaji. Yeah, are you with us? Okay, Salim, bari bari one now. Yang kuri na zwa kaji. Ah, the questioner was asking a question based on uh, the five daily prayers first of all there is no such thing as five daily prayers in the quran there is no khamsa salawat in the quran and secondly your question is based at around you wanted to know how god mentioned if i get you right what did you say yes god mentioned salat in the quran yes he mentioned so salat, which yes. salat he yes mentioned, so which, which salat the God mentioned, and then how is it done? He mentioned Salat al Fajr, chapter 24, verse 58. You find the name there, and chapter 24, verse 58, you, have, you find Salat al Isha, the name is there. Chapter 2, verse 238, he mentioned Salat al Al Wusta, you get the name there. 
And as for how to do in a summary, you go to Quran chapter 19, verse 58. The way the prophet did their salat is pertaining to the verses of God recited to the people. If it is you alone, you recite the verses for yourself to benefit from the message. Then after that, you bow down in prostration and do your sujood and invoke your, your maker. So that is the summary of the salat. So to know how the salat itself could be done according to the instance of the Qiyam, the Ruku, the Sujud. I have the video concerning it on my YouTube channel, The Correctional Officer. So you will get the answers to that question there, right? Uh-huh. So like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I have to end the program now. Uh, I, I, lo I would have loved to continue, but I have to attend to the family. I can't keep on. Uh, uh, Shahid says what? Let me see. Yeah, thank you very much, Brother Shahid. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please open up your mind to learn, right? Uh, thank you very much. I just got a message for somebody, honestly. Thank you. I appreciate that. Open up your mind to study right uh-huh i'm not ne never telling somebody to come and be my servant or take my word at ultimate because whatever i give you is based on hard work and research i've done i'm not just sitting down using my whims and desires whatever you see me saying i can prove it right i'm not here to speak out of my desires so i'm only helping you to also study together with me so that the evidences i'll provide you go and make your own researches i'm not saying you have to believe by force whatever i say you understand it makes sense to you take it it doesn't make sense that's your choice on the day of judgment you are on your own and my on my own but doesn't stop me from telling you the truth if i see the truth there i have to tell you you understand uh -huh. i have to tell you so that you can erase the lies away from your lives to free up your mind from the mental slavery we've been facing both in religion and any aspect of life please if you know where you are coming from you will definitely know where you are going so I'm only here to liberate the people, to let people reason for themselves, ask questions. This is why I put my phone number there and let you call me. I'm not scared of anyone. Neither am I here to deceive anybody, right? So I tell you the truth as it is, take it or leave it. That's it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I appreciate that. I need to attend to the family. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and peace be upon you all. I appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. Go to